Hello, hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I am starting another reading vlog of a series that I thought I had abandoned, that I had DNF'd, I wasn't gonna finish it. And yet here we are. So as like the entire rest of the world, I recently watched the newest season of Bridgerton, season two, and was obsessed, so obsessed, okay? Is that shocking? No, everyone loved it, right? So I immediately went out and got the book, The Viscount Who Loved Me, uh, just completely ditched my TBR and was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to read this now against my better judgment. Why am I like this? So I basically did the exact same thing with the first season. I watched it against my better judgment because Shonda Rhimes has done me wrong so many times. I was like, no, I'm not going to watch this. Absolutely not. I do not need that kind of heartbreak in my life again. But then everybody watched it and was so obsessed. So I did too. And I loved it. I was so obsessed. I was so obsessed. Um, so I immediately went out and got The Duke and I. And I thought that I would be bored because obviously I'd already watched the show. So I already knew what was going to happen. Um, but I actually, the first half of the book, I really enjoyed. It read like a fic because the show is an ensemble cast, but the book was literally just Simon and Daphne. Like, that's it. There were no other characters unless they were like directly talking to them. So I loved it. I was, I was really, really enjoying and it. And then that scene happened. You know, the one, the problematic as hell scene happened. If you watch the show, you know, you know which one I'm talking about. And it is so much worse in the book. So much worse in the book. I, I couldn't after that. I didn't want Simon and Daphne to be together. I was like, Simon deserves better. I don't know how I finished that book. I really don't. Like kudos to me because the me now would have DNF'd, would have DNF'd that immediately. Absolutely not. I don't want to read that. That's disgusting. I don't care if it's historically accurate. I don't want to read that. My modern brain does not want to read that. So after I was like, okay, I'll continue watching the series, but like the book series is dead to me. No, I'm not going to read anymore. And here we are. Here we are. I'm about 30 pages into this right now. And it's already different. Um, I'm just, I'm living on a hope and a prayer that it is not going to be problematic like the first one. I believe that it is the most popular or like the highest rated one on Goodreads. And I pray that that means it's not going to be problematic. I didn't find the second season to be so, so I'm hopeful, but then I'm like, well, they probably changed a lot of stuff. So who knows? But I'm like 30 pages in and the biggest difference is that Kate and Edwina are not Indian. Am I still picturing them as such? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. Because no, because I already have that image in my head. So they're just, they're going to be who they are. Okay. They're going to be who they were in the show and I'm not changing it. I'm not going to change that perception in my mind. Sorry. Sorry. But I'm sorry. really hoping that they don't change uh, the personality of my girl Kate because I loved her in this series. I guess if you don't know what it's about, maybe I should, I should probably tell you, like for the people that maybe haven't watched Bridgerton, I don't know. It's a Regency romance about this family called the Bridgertons that live in England in the um, early 1800s. And um, they're like of high society. And so every year they have like a coming out of these women who are trying to get married. It's like a cattle call basically. Um, it's, it's all, I just don't think I'm meant for Regency romances, but yet here I am. So um, the first book was about Daphne who was the oldest daughter, but like the fourth child. And this book is about Anthony who is the oldest. He's the oldest son and like the oldest of all eight children, eight. Wow. And I believe that there are eight books in the series and each book is about a dif the different children. And so this is Anthony's, this is Anthony's story, but I'm not here for that. I'm here for Kate. I don't know about the book, but Kate in the show loved her. She's a 26 year old spinster. Um, 
hate that term at 26 come on but she's a 26 year old spinster and she has a dog i mean and her name's kate i mean not only does she have like the best name as my kate will tell you but um but i loved her she took no shit from anyone she had a cute little dog loved her loved her i'm here for kate i'm here for kate and her backstory which i know would probably not be the same because again like it's already so different but i'm really hoping that i like kate in this because that's what i'm here for we'll let you know we'll let you know how big of a mistake this was for me but if this if this is bad i'm not doing it again i'm not doing it with the third season I'm probably going to, but I'm telling you right now, I don't want to. I'm probably going to, even if this is bad, but I don't want to. Lou and I just want to know, what? oh yes, why Anthony keeps saying that Kate is not attractive in this book. We want to know. Because that's not something that was in the show. Um... Kate just thinks she's plain and ugly. And I'm like, why would she think that? But then Anthony literally says it multiple times. He's like, she's not as attractive as her sister. I would never marry someone like her. She's not even that attractive. And I'm like, what? We're not here for it, right? Kate is beautiful. We're not here for this. Look, she's not here for it. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. No. I'm going to get Kate's opinion on it now. How do you feel about him saying that people with brown hair and brown eyes are not attractive? She's literally, she's asleep. She's like, no, that doesn't interest me at all. That's not a good guy. Say, all Kates are beautiful. Okay, so I'm like 50% into this book, um, and I realized I didn't even say what it was about. I did not. I, did, I certainly did not. I said what the series was, but I didn't say what this book was. So yes, it is Anthony's story, and he basically is known for being a rake or a person who hooks up with a bunch of women. <clears throat> and he has this reputation, but... He has decided that he wants to get married out of duty, but he doesn't want to marry anyone that he's going to love. He basically just wants to marry like a trophy wife with a brain, I guess. Um, and so he decides that he's going to go after whoever is named like the best of the best, which happens to be this girl called Edwina, who's supposed to be like beyond gorgeous and um, smart as well. And so he's like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to marry her easy done um well the problem is that she has an older sister kate and um most unfortunately for him kate knows of his reputation and she's had some encounters with him where he has been um less than gentlemanly with her and so she is like fully against it she's like absolutely not you're not gonna marry my sister i don't want you anywhere near her um and yeah so you know enemies to lovers I think what I don't like about this, first of all, I just don't think that this Regency romance is for me because of the inherent sexism in it. Um, you know, I know it's historically accurate, but when a guy says something like, women shouldn't have pets if they don't know how to control them, I'm sorry, that's not attractive to me at all. No, thank you. I also really hate, and I think I said this before, that it's constantly mentioned that Kate is not supposed to be as attractive as her sister or like attractive at all. And I can understand why she would think that because you literally have people like Anthony who um, say stuff like that. So I can understand why she would believe that because I mean, if enough people tell you something, then you start to believe it about yourself. Relatable. 
But, um, again, not attractive when Anthony is, like, um, even as he's starting to, like, switch over to actually liking her when he'll be like, oh my gosh, I never, I never noticed how attractive Kate is. I mean, she's not as attractive as her sister, but like in her own right, she is. And I'm like, what? Like, can't we just say that she's pretty? Like, why? Why? I, I just don't like that. I don't like it. This is how they're going to get me. This is how they're going to get me. Because now they're starting to show Anthony in a light where he's like a good guy and I'm like there's a scene in a library that I'm at right now and I'm like why why are you making me like him because I don't but I feel like I will it's gonna be like the opposite of the Duke and I where like the first half I did not want them together but then the second half I will because he's a good guy unless something like terrible happens but the library scene, I'm liking that. I'm liking it. it. Plays out very differently than the show. That's all I'm gonna say. It's it's good. There's a lot of stuff that I wish had been in the show, and there's a lot of stuff I wish, and I'm or rather I'm glad was not included in the show. That B scene. That played out way differently than in the show. I was not expecting that. Wow. <laughs> it was like, it might have been hotter than the show, to be honest. I've not read far enough to know. I mean, it definitely changes things. But I can't, like in my mind, I can't figure out how. It's going to be good. I'm so invested now, damn it! Oh, I'm so mad at myself. Okay, so I'm like 75% through. I have less than 100 pages left. And where to even start? There are moments in this that I really like. And if those moments were in like any other book with any other ship, I would be eating it up, okay? I would be eating it up. And in these moments, like, I'm so invested. I'm like, oh, I do ship them. Like, I really like them. And then Anthony opens his mouth and says something so sexist or just disgusting that I'm like, oh. Just, just be quiet. Just be quiet be so much better because sometimes he says things that I'm like oh, my heart and then other times I'm like why why would you why would you say that and then I'm like oh I know why you would say that because we're in the 1800s I don't like that it's not attractive oh my gosh it's just no it's not I think my problem is that I want an historical setting but I want, like, a not historically accurate man. Like, I want the cinnamon roll. I want the cinnamon roll that's not going to speak or have the same attitude as someone from that time. And that's not what I'm getting here. <laughs> and that upsets me. Because I, that's what I want and I'm, I'm not getting it. Also, Kate breaking my heart. I just want to wrap her in a hug. There was one moment, um, I'm not going to say the context because I would spoil it, but she literally, Anthony calls her beautiful and she literally like freezes up and like starts tearing up because she thinks that he is picturing someone else because he couldn't possibly be talking about her. like this poor girl and then there's another moment where Anthony says something like I just want to beat everyone up who made her feel like she wasn't beautiful and I'm like so you you're gonna you're gonna beat yourself up because you've done that oh my god I'm like Kate, Kate. 
I love her. Love her. Don't love Anthony. Anthony has moments, very fleetingly brief moments, where I think that he is nice. And the rest of the time, I don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> So I finished The Viscount Who Loved Me today, and um, yeah, that about sums it up. <laughs> um, where to even start? Uh, first of all, I ended up giving it three stars, um, which is the exact same rating that I gave the first book, The Duke and I. Now I will say that I did enjoy this more than the first book um but I still didn't enjoy it <laughs> that much I mean was it the worst book that I've ever read no but um it's probably my least favorite that I've read this year so far yikes um that sounds so bad it was not a bad it was not a completely bad read. It was a really quick read. Um, it was at some points enjoyable, um, but those those moments were brief. Yeah. I said at the beginning of this that I was here for Kate, and I can absolutely say that at the end of this, I'm here for Kate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I loved Kate. Uh, I definitely felt like the book and the show version of Kate were very different, almost like two different people, but I really loved both versions and I would go as far as saying that Kate was probably my favorite character um, in the show and the book of the series so far. Um, I'm obviously only two books and two series in, but Kate has been my favorite. I just, I really, really loved her. I. I just wanted to give her a hug. I wanted to be her friend and I found her relatable on a lot of different levels. So yeah, I'm still here just for Kate and her dog. Love now that. I'm not going to write off the entire subgenre of Regency romance, um, mostly because I've never read any others. Uh, these two books in the series are the only two that I've read, so I can't really speak to if how that is how most books of this time period um, are written, or if it's literally just the series that I don't care for. But as I've said before in this vlog, I really like the historical setting, but I don't love the attitude that men had towards women, and that just really puts a damper on shipping. <laughs> I basically want like a modern mindset in a man in a historical setting. And Anthony was not that guy. Was he the worst guy? No. I mean, there were certainly moments throughout this that I really enjoyed and I felt like you know, I could really ship them. And then unfortunately, Anthony would open his mouth and he would say something either super sexist or just ugh, so frustrating that I could not ship them in the way that I ship most of my ships, which was incredibly disappointing. There were a, there were a few moments um, in the book that I really loved, particularly the library scene and the scene with the bee um, that I wish had been included in the show, uh, particularly the library scene. Um, the bee scene was in the show, but it played out very differently and literally changed the course of the entire story. Um, I can't really say which one I preferred. I mean, I definitely preferred the show over these books. Yikes. 100% I will be continuing the show, but I likely will not read another book from this series. Watch me eat my words, but that's the plan right now. However, in terms of like the course of Anthony and Kate's story, 
I don't know. I feel like I'd want like a patchwork of what happened in the show and what happened in the book. Um, but I can't really say like which course I really prefer. Like I said, I'll definitely be continuing the show for sure. I really, really enjoyed that. And I would absolutely say go watch the show. It's really good. It's really good. And then if you decide to read the book, then you can picture Simone Ashley as Kate, like I did the entire time. But to be honest, I would just skip the book. <laughs> I just really did not care for Anthony. I really didn't ship Anthony and Kate. But I loved Kate. <laughs> um, she kind of broke my heart. Touched on this already, but you know, I'm going to go back to my girl Kate. Um... Yeah, when Anthony said that he could never love her and oh, also love the fact that in the show they cut out all the stuff about Kate not being pretty. Thank you. Thank you. Um, because that was absolutely heartbreaking and I liked that the show focused more on the fact that it was Kate's selflessness to her sister as the reason why she didn't want to get married as opposed to her just not being selected because she wasn't as pretty as her sister. No, thank you. That was, that was actually heartbreaking. Mm hmm Kate deserved better in this book. But yeah, overall, I would not say that it was a terrible book, but I really did not enjoy it. <laughs> but to each their own, you know, if I had a choice, I would just skip the books and watch the show. So much better in my opinion. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I read it. Didn't love it, but I'm glad I read it. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and um, if you want to subscribe, please do. That would make me so happy, and I will definitely be doing more of these vlogs. I think it's so fun to kind of talk out my feelings about books, um, or, you know, in this case, my extreme frustration. Um, yeah, so I definitely plan on doing more, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!